Am I the a-hole for taking my clothes off at the Cheesecake Factory? So me and my BF were celebrating our one-year anniversary and went out to dinner to celebrate. My BF planned it as he knows how much I love the Cheesecake Factory. I really love their cheesecake. This becomes important later. Well, everything was going fine, and we were having a good time until an elderly man at the next table scooted his chair out just as our server was approaching, causing him to stumble and spill hot coffee on me down my back. It was obviously burning and startled me, so I instinctively screamed and pulled my shirt up. I'm pretty small-chested, so I don't typically wear a bra, and obviously I wasn't thinking about that when something hot was running down my back burning me, so I basically flashed all those at the tables around us. Yes, I was embarrassed, but at the same time, it's just boobs. I pulled my shirt back down right after realizing what happened, but it was up for about 15 seconds. The server apologized over and over, but it wasn't their fault. It was all just an accident. Well, anyway, after this, my BF wanted to leave, like immediately leave. He said that I was being overdramatic for the way I reacted in the situation. And maybe I was, but it did startle me really bad and it did burn. He told me I had put on a show for everyone in the restaurant, especially since I screamed when it happened and that we need to leave. I told him it's not that big a deal and that I really want to stay to get cheesecake because it's my favorite. I eventually even offered to try to get some to go and he was dead set that we need to leave and didn't understand why I wasn't mortified. We ended up staying, but for the rest of the date, he kept saying that the men at tables near us were staring at me and probably thinking about me inappropriately, but I said it wasn't my problem if they're being gross. When we got in the car, he told me I ruined our anniversary for making him sit through that and we should have just left, and that he can't believe I would choose a piece of cheesecake over his comfortability. We argued in the car the whole way home about it, and now we haven't spoken at all today. Am I the asshole? My wife divorced me five years after making me get a vasectomy. Am I the a-hole for not being on speaking terms with her anymore? My ex-wife and I finalized our divorce proceedings last year. We had a kid when we were 21, we got married at 25, and at 26, my wife made me get a vasectomy because she did not want any more kids. I was hesitant because I always wanted more kids, but for the sake of our marriage, I decided to get a vasectomy, and my wife was very happy about it. However, our marriage went through its ups and downs, and we both amicably decided on a divorce because we weren't compatible. Even after the divorce, we were on good speaking terms and we were good friends. However, a month after finalizing our divorce proceedings, I went to the doctor to check if my vasectomy could be reversed, and after evaluating everything, the doctor told me it couldn't be reversed. I was devastated and really regretted listening to my wife many years ago who made me get this vasectomy and who also then divorced me later. I took a week off work because I was really struggling with this news and I built up a lot of resentment towards my ex-wife, but for the sake of our son, I acted like everything was normal. However, I decided a week later after speaking to my sister that I needed a clean break from my ex-wife and to cut off all communication with her, even though she was my son's mother. My sister let my ex-wife know. The co-parenting arrangements would still be the same and I would drop and pick up my son, but if my ex-wife attempted to even say anything or speak to me, I would go to the courts and the co-parenting arrangement could then become extremely complicated. Any further communication with me would be via my sister. It's been almost a year since this arrangement, and my son asks me occasionally why I don't speak to his mom anymore. He told me he's seen his mom crying many times, especially after I drop him off, and when he asks her about it, she says nothing. My sister tells me my ex-wife is very remorseful about it, and if she could take it back, she would, and she's asked multiple times if we could at least communicate normally because she misses talking to me. But I will never go back on it, especially as I've now been dating my current girlfriend for a few months and we're becoming serious. Am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for not helping my girlfriend's sister move because I didn't want to? I'll. My girlfriend's sister and her partner moved house last weekend from a one-bed apartment to their first house together. With their old apartment and new house are all within a 40-minute radius. My girlfriend asked me two weeks before the move if I could help. I replied with a no thank you. When asked for the reason I replied, I didn't want to, which I feel is fair and is my true reason. She said this was fine and I never heard about it again. A few days ago when visiting the new house, her sister asked me if everything was all right with my mother's car, as this was the reason I could not help move. I asked what she meant and my partner had said on the morning of my mother's car had issues, so I went to help with that instead whilst my partner helped with the move. 
I explained this didn't happen and again said I didn't want to help with the move. She seemed fine, a bit confused and we sat in silence. My partner was not there at the time. On the ride home, there's an argument about me not helping and then making my partner look bad by not sticking to the story of which I had no knowledge and would not have gone along with anyway. It appears I am the bad guy. If my partner simply said, the reason at the time I feel like this all could have been avoided. To add possibly an important note, I did work as a mover for eight years in the past. However, I have been in an office sales role for many years now. On the day of the move, I woke up late, cooked breakfast instead of having something quick on a weekday and watched casino for the 50th time. Most likely not relevant, however, adding just in case. I'm not too sure where this puts me. I am possibly the asshole for the initial refusal. I have no obligation to help. Everything beyond that was out of my control. I don't understand why I'm the bad guy. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents they could be a part of my kids' lives if they gave me my inheritance? My grandparents passed away when I was very young. They left me an inheritance that would have paid for my education and helped me get started in life. If my parents had left it alone, I would be in a good place. My cousins and older sister are all debt-free and own their own homes. My dad decided that he could do better than the account my grandfather left my money in. I got $27,000 when I was old enough to get my money. That was about 10% of what everyone else got. My parents also lost a bunch of money that had been left to my mom. I have cut my parents out of my life. They were not invited to my wedding and they have not met my kids. My sister is child free so I have their only grandchildren. My parents want to be a part of their lives. I said that if they replaced my money with interest I would forgive them and allow them to meet my kids. They say that I'm being ridiculous and that the amount of money I'm asking for would put a huge dent in their retirement fund. I asked them how much they would have if my idiot father didn't think he knew better than my grandfather. My sister thinks I'm being mean. I told her that she was welcome to give me her money if she didn't think it was a factor. She said she wasn't going to do that. I also suggested she go have a kid if she wants them to have grandchildren. Once again, that was not an option. It has been years, obviously, and I'm still pissed that they stole my future just for my father's ego, to show he could turn a profit investing like my grandfather had. Am I the a-hole? 